Welcome back. The big story in Washington this week is President Donald Trump's decision to cut the DACA program, which would end protections for young adults brought into the U.S. illegally as children. He's giving Congress six months to create a law allowing them to stay legally. So joining us now to discuss, we welcome our legal contributor, Attorney Seth Padgett. Thanks. Well, welcome thanks back. for being here. All right, so kind of start off with explaining what exactly DACA is and what it provided for these children who were brought illegally by their parents to the U.S. It allows the, the, the when they're brought here as children by their parents, it allows them to legally work in the country. They can register with the government. They can work legally in the country. In some states, they're allowed to get driver's licenses, and they're also allowed to get in-state tuition at public universities. So these people, 800,000 of them, took a big leap of faith, saying, well, if you're, I'm not going to be deported, I'll come out into the open, I'll come out in the public, and now you can work legally, you can get a driver's license, you can get in-state public tuition. So it's a good program for people who are brought here. They did nothing wrong. They were brought right. here as children by mm -hmm. their parents. Do they pay taxes as well? They do. They do, okay. every, so just they like do, they do everything just like <laughs> any one of us would do, except they're not citizens. But they have, a, they have legal protections now under this program. So what's going to happen to all of those people if this thing goes through? Well, that's a, that's a good question. So what will happen is st starting on March 5th of 2018, DACA will be phased out under what uh, President Trump announced. Well, actually, Attorney General Sessions announced yesterday. Uh, he did the announcement under President Trump's program. March 5th, 2018, DACA will be phased out. March 6th, 2018, the people could start being deported, technically. Uh, the people that came forward, their protections would run out, and they could start, start being deported. Is Trump trying to say that this was um improperly done by Obama's administration? Was it unconstitutional for them to do the executive order for it? Well, what happened is President Obama tried to get the DREAM Act passed through Congress, and it couldn't get passed. And the DREAM Act would have said, had these protections for these, they, well, that's why we call them DREAMers. It would have had these protections for them. Congress, I mean, it fizzled out in Congress, and they tried to do the comprehensive, comprehensive immigration reform. It fizzled out. So then President Obama, on his own, did the executive order, with it, which led to DACA. Now, I, it likely is an overreach by the president to do this all by himself. Mm -hmm. The president probably does not have the authority under our system to enact this by himself. And that was the concern President Trump had, as the, these attorney generals have filed a suit to get this thrown out. And that was President Trump's concern that this was going to get overturned in the courts. So what he's saying is, Congress, act. Mm -hmm. And it, it depends. I mean, one minute, one minute President Trump saying, he doesn't like the program. One minute he's saying, I do like the program. I want Congress to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I think what this is leading up to is a comprehensive immigration reform. Can Congress pass it? Who knows? But it's going to, it would include some elements of the wall that President Trump wants, and then what the Democrats want, and a lot of moderate Republicans as well, which is the DACA protections for these children that coming that, that came. It's a rough group. Is, yeah, it's a rough group to talk about. I mean, because there's a lot on Congress's plate right now. I yes. mean, they have seven things that they're having to look at right now, including aviation and children's health care and so many things that are right now that are really important. Harvey relief. I mean, so many things. Mm -hmm. So are they going to be able to do this or can they do this? I mean, there's going to be a government shutdown in order to get this approved, right? Who knows? It, it, we need Congress to work in this country. In fact, I had a conversation before I came over here. Uh, with, a, with a person I work with, and I was telling her, Congress can work. And that's what we set up this system way back in the Constitution. James Madison and Alexander Hamilton set up the system for Congress to work, to compromise. You can't exactly get everything you want. That's why you have to compromise with the other side. It's going to take the Democrats compromising on the wall. It's going to take the Republicans compromising on this issue. And hopefully you come together, you get a plan that has border security and also has protections for these people who deserve protection. And we mm -hmm. vote for a reason. So write to your, if you know, if you want DACA to, to not be ended or if you do want it to end, just write to your state and yeah. your uh, and your commissioners to, That's you right. know, have your voice be heard. You voted so that you would have a say in Congress. Exactly. All right, well, something else that we wanted to talk to you about, a chemical plant fire that was a result of flooding in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Though the fire is now out, experts say the accident at the plant has exposed large flaws in regulation of chemical safety, risk disclosure, and emergency planning. So what are the environmental laws that could have been broken and, and how do we make sure it doesn't happen again? Well, these actually, the, the fire that started at that plant, the chemicals that, that start there, these organic peroxides, that they aren't even regulated by the government, which is oh. sort of surprising. Oh, that's a little freaky. Uh, and, and what the Obama administration tried to do was to try to get, so these chemical plants had to disclose to the EPA and to first responders what chemicals they have at these plants. So the first responders know when they go in and try to help the situation. 
the plants and some attorney generals in different states fought that. They said, no, we don't want to be regulated to this degree. In fact, the current administrator, administrator excuse me, of the EPA, Scott Pruitt, who was appointed by President Trump, he was one of those attorney generals that said, we don't, these chemical companies shouldn't have to disclose this. And they did it under the guise of, we don't want terrorists to know about what, what chemicals are in these plants. But mm -hmm. that's sort of... But don't, doesn't <laughs> fire and rescue need to know so that they exactly. know how to put out any fires caused by the chemicals? Exactly. That's what I say. It's sort of hogwash. Because yeah. if you think about it, why can't you tell the first responders what chemicals are there so they know when they go in there and, and, and to try to, to alleviate the situation? But that goes to, we always hear all, you know, the government, all these regulations, it's killing small business. Well, a lot of these regulations are for our health and safety. Mm -hmm. They're good things. And we need these regulations, especially when it comes to chemical plants. There's chemical plants on the north side of Jacksonville and all, all around the first coast. Mm -hmm. These plants need to be regulated. But something like what happened in Houston, as we know with this hurricane approaching, yeah. it could happen here. And we don't need uh, on hurricanes and floods. And on top of that, chemical plants exploding. So the government has a role to regulate this, these chemical plants, and they need to to protect all of us. So who's at fault here, the EPA, the government, or the company? I think it's a little bit of everything. Everything. Everybody. Exactly. Everything. Everybody. 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 Right now, <laughs> I, I would say it's these, these, the chemical plants do not want to be regulated. Is more regulations cost them more money. Yep. But, those but are they're like, making so much exactly. money, though. Right. They're making billions of dollars yeah. of profit every year. And these regulations are for our health and safety. Mm -hmm. Regulations are good. Seat belts are good. That's a regulation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, certain protections in hot tubs are good. Those are regulations. Now kids don't get sucked to the bottom of pools and get their intestines sucked out of them, mm -hmm. which used to happen. Right. So these regulations are good. They protect us, and they're safe. Mm -hmm. So. Who, who's responsible then for the cleanup now? Like, who has to take on that? Is it going to well, be the us. city? Well, it's us. Our tax dollars. The taxpayers. In fact, these chemical plants, this chemical plant in Houston gets tax dollars every year uh, to help with their with their funding, just these public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. Partnerships, excuse me. So these companies are taking our tax dollars, and now our tax dollars are going to clean up their own mess. Sounds like a C-O-N-spiracy. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, oh, I want to talk about regulations real quick. How are these regulations set? The EPA largely does it themselves. The, the EPA has a lot of power to set these regulations. So it, it, the, right now under Scott Pruitt, who's the EPA director for President Trump, looking at his track rec record, he lets these oil and chemical companies pretty much do what they want. Mm. Uh, in fact, he had, when he was attorney general in Oklahoma, he would have oil lobbyists write some of the, his proposals that he'd sent to the oh, wow. legislature in Oklahoma. Oh, but it goes back to what you said. It's you know, We can take that power back. It's just getting out and voting and making sure yeah. that we know we have the right people in power. That's the hard yeah. part, Julie. Yeah. That's the hard part. Hey, that part, just go out and vote. Do your research. Yeah, it's easy as that. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, well, thank you so much, of course, for coming sure. in and clearing things up for us. We'd like to thank our legal contributor, Seth Padgett of the law firm Padgett and & Padgett. And coming up next, following Hurricane Harvey and anticipating Hurricane Irma's impact, how is Congress handling the fund to aid the affected areas? We chat with political expert Dr. Bender after the break.